Hey guys, what is going on? Welcome back to another video. Now in this video, we are going to be talking about how we're able to verify the C rating of a lithium polymer battery pack. Now there's two reasons that you may want to do this. One is you just purchased that brand new battery pack. You got a 50 C pack, but you got it for such a great deal. Now you're wondering if it wasn't just some marketing team who slapped on an arbitrary 50 C number to the front so that you'd pick it up thinking you just got a great deal or you may have had this lithium polymer battery pack for such a long time, let's say two years, you thought it was operating great in that first year, but now you think that the performance of that battery pack might not be as good as it once was. Now you wanna verify that C rating. It is true, over time, the C rating of a battery pack can actually degrade. What we try and do is we try and maintain the battery pack as best as we can so that we avoid running into any sort of premature wear of the battery pack. Now before we get too far into this video, I wanna review a little bit very quickly as to what the C rating actually represents and how we actually determine what we need to determine out of it, which is the discharge current. What we're primarily interested in is continuous rated values. We're never interested on this channel in peak values. Peak values are very arbitrary and they don't really tell us much about the system at all. So what we do is we take the continuous rated discharge value on the front of the battery pack. This is usually on the front of a label and you can see here, it's usually the number placed there. Now there might be two values where it says 50 slash 100 or 25 slash 50 or 30 slash 50. You get the idea, two values. The smaller one is gonna be what we're interested in for continuous output power. The C rating of the battery pack, that number is just an arbitrary number that manufacturers have placed onto the front of the battery pack. They have or should at least have done their own test to verify that that's correct and it matches the thermal limit that they've set for their own battery packs. It's important to keep in mind there is no set standard on how this process is done. That's what we're trying to do within this video. We'll talk about the standard that we set up near the end of this video. We have a nice tool that we can use on the radiocontrolinfo.com website. To calculate the C rating, what you need to first know about your battery pack is the capacity of it. You take that from right off the front of the battery pack. Let's say you have a 5,000 milliamp hour battery pack with a rating of 50 C. First thing that you need to do is take that 5,000 milliamp hour and you have to go ahead and divide it by a thousand to convert it into just amp hour. That leaves you with a five amp hour battery pack. Now you take the five and you multiply it by the 50 and that's going to represent the maximum continuous discharge current that you can get out of that battery pack. In this case, it would be 250 amps. Now that we have that out of the way, let's talk about ways that we're able to identify the C rating of the battery pack. One of the first ways that you'd be able to do that, and it's not necessarily one that I would recommend, I would certainly expect that manufacturers would be doing this, the manufacturers of the lithium polymer battery packs, or at least a certain variation of this particular test. They sell these devices out there, even specifically for the RC uh, community or industry, and that is some sort of load bank. A load bank is where you can place your battery pack on, and it's going to draw power from that battery pack and turn it into heat. So it's gonna make a lot of heat. And what you wanna do is you wanna start off with a 100% fully charged battery pack and you wanna discharge it all the way down to 20%. Now what we need to do also is configure that load bank to discharge at the rate of the continuous rated spec on that battery pack. Now you can imagine this is going to take a lot of power out of that battery pack at a very, very quick rate. This is why it's not something that I would particularly recommend because A, it's could harm myself, it is not the most safe thing to do. You're taking a lot of power and you're converting it into heat very quickly. And the biggest thing is you don't even know if the battery pack can actually sustain it. That's what you're actually testing. If it doesn't sustain it and you forget to shut it off in the time that it's actually discharging, you could have a problem. Uh, the other reason is, is because it is putting a lot of stress on that battery pack and I don't wanna do that to any of my battery packs. Now, one of the things that you wanna do if you are going ahead and pursuing this is you wanna be careful, but in addition to that, you want to go ahead and measure the temperature right through the entire sweep of that from 100% to fully discharged. And what you're looking for is for that battery pack not to exceed the temperature, the maximum temperature that the manufacturer has specified for that pack. If there is no maximum recommended temperature for that pack, you want to use 60 degrees Celsius or 140 degrees Fahrenheit. 
Let's take a look at the second way that we can identify a C rating of a battery pack. Now this one is a little bit more simple, however it's also complex at the same time. So let's explain. What we can also do is take the internal resistance measurement for all the cells within our battery pack. We can average them so we get the average cell internal resistance. That resistance is going to be in the form of milliohms. Now the complex part comes from how you are able to compare that value to what's out there. There's two ways that you can do this. You can either find on a forum or some other place what the expected internal resistance should be for a particular C rating of a battery pack. You can compare your value up against that value. Now what would be even better is if you have the same C rated battery pack that you would be able to compare up against. It does not need to be the same manufacturer or model or any of that. It just needs to have the same C rating. Let's say that you had a 5,000 milliamp hour battery pack with a rating of 50 C in the past and you also have a new one today. What you'd be able to do is compare the internal resistance of your pack today against the pack that you've had in the past. Let's say that pack that you had in the past had an internal resistance of 2 milliohms However, your pack has a resistance of 3.5 milliohms. You'd be able to determine that your pack today is not going to perform as well as that pack that you had before. So whether the 50C rating is right or wrong, it doesn't matter because the performance that you're going to get out of that pack is not as good as the performance that you had out of that pack historically. Now let's move on to what I think is the easiest way that we could do this. What we will need to identify is a few items. In order to do this, you'll have to hop onto the radiocontrolinfo.com website. We have a spot there and we'll show it very soon. We'll, we'll get to that where you want to go ahead and input a bunch of values. In order to get these values, one of the values will have to be measured. The other two values can be taken right off the label of your battery pack. What you will need is the capacity in milliamp hour of your battery pack, the internal resistance on average per cell of that battery pack measured specifically in milliohms. The calculator does not accept just an ohm value. It has to be milliohms. And you'll also need what the label says your spec C rating is. Now one of the first things we'll have to do is establish a standard for the resistance component that we go ahead and input into the calculator. This is where the most amount of error could occur within the calculation. What you'll want to do is follow this specific procedure. In order to capture the internal resistance, you will want to make sure that you're charging the battery pack at room temperature. Let's say 22 degrees Celsius or 72 degrees Fahrenheit. You'll also want to make sure that you're going to be charging the battery pack at a rate of 1.5 C. Now that is only if your battery pack can be charged at 1.5 C. Now the other thing that you want to do is you want to go ahead, place that on the charger and start charging at your 1.5 C, but you'll want to take the first reading of internal resistance that your battery charger provides you with. And the reason why we're trying to take the very first reading that we get in our battery is because we want to make sure that the process is as quick as possible. Typically a charger will provide you with that first reading within the first three minutes. If you ever watch the internal resistance on your charge from start to end, you'll notice that the first reading that you get is typically the highest value of internal resistance, especially if the battery is cold. Then the next value, it'll progressively get lower and lower and lower. And you'll also may realize that as soon as you hit the 4.2 volts per cell mark, that you'll see that the values start getting a little bit sporadic. It starts to not make sense. That's because of the way and the process that your charger is actually set up. What you'll wanna do is you wanna start charging that battery pack somewhere between 20 and 40% of its charged capacity. Now that we've gotten that all out of the way, we're gonna go ahead and test a battery pack. We're gonna find out what the internal resistance is. We're gonna add up all the internal resistances per cell to a total and we're going to divide it by how many cells that we get so that we get the average. We're only looking for the average internal resistance of a cell within the pack. So let's go ahead and jump over to the computer. Here we are at the radiocontrolinfo.com website. First thing we need to do is hover over the information tab, hover over RC general calculators and select the LiPo C rating calculator. Once we have that selected, we'll arrive at the page where we have a few entries to make. The first entry we must make is for the battery capacity. This will be measured in milliamp hour and comes right off the label of your battery pack. 
The next item we have to insert is the average cell's internal resistance of the LiPo battery pack. This value is going to be measured in milliohms, and that is important. Make sure you enter the value in milliohms and not just ohms. Ohms is going to look like a very small number, and it should be something larger than this. The next item that we have to enter is the battery packs rated C rating and you can place that into this field. Once that's done, you click calculate. You'll notice below you'll have a bunch of instructions should you want more details as to what you do. There's also the average internal resistance of the LiPo it goes into detail to explain exactly that. So let's start off by looking at our first LiPo battery pack which has a capacity of 2200 and a C rating of 35C. The next thing we need to do is take a look at the value of resistance. So this was a test done the other day where I started off between 20 to 40 percent just like what we mentioned in the video previously there and this is important to make sure we stay away from that 4.20 volts per cell. What we have to do here is take our two cells and we want to average this resistance. What we do is we open up our calculator, we insert the 4.8 as our first cell, we add the 4.5 milliohms, and then we divide by two after we've totaled it. This comes to 4.65. We can now go ahead and enter 4.65 into the calculator and click the calculate that C rating. Once we have that clicked, then we have the calculated C rating works out to 35C and then it tells us that your battery pack is performing at its rated C rating of 35C, which is the value that we placed into the field above. So let's now try this for a different battery pack, a smaller battery pack. We'll go ahead and reset this by entering the page again. This time we're going to be looking at a battery pack that has a 850 milliamp hour capacity, much smaller. It's also a 2S battery pack and the battery pack's rated C rating is going to be only 25C this time. We'll go ahead and instead of this we'll look at the other picture that we have here and we'll average these out as well. Keep in mind, we did the exact same thing. We're charging at a rate of 1.5C and the battery pack is a little bit over 3.9 volts or so. Now let's average out our values here. We have an internal resistance on cell number one of 20.7 and we'll add that to the 19.9. And then we'll total it, divide it by two, and we enter 20.3 into this field right here. Once we have that done, we click calculate that C rating for it to then go ahead and process that information. So the calculated C rating for this particular battery pack is 25C, and our battery pack is performing at its rated C rating, much like what we had before. If we were to try another one, and we'll make a value up just to see what kind of results we get, we go ahead and we enter 5,000 milliamp hour. We're going to go for something aggressive like a 65C, and we're going to enter a value of resistance of 2. 8 uh, milliohms and that's going to be the average cell resistance for our 65 C rated pack. We go ahead and calculate that C rating and we're going to get a different value. The calculated C rating in this case is 25C and it says here that your battery pack is performing worse than its C rating of 65C. And if we did the exact opposite where we gave this a very good internal resistance we would see that it will provide us with a different message here. 5,000 milliamp hour pack with a 0.8 milliohm resistance there per cell is going to give us a value for the C rating above 65. The limit for this calculator is between 20 and 65. There's no data yet in the database above and below those two values. Once there's more data added to the database, this will then open up. Hey guys, I hope you were able to get something out of today's video. Please like the video if you do, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button so that I can see you in that next video. Thanks for watching. See you next Monday.